You'll never guess where we are. You'll never guess. <laughs> well, I don't know where we are, so I hope you can guess. We're in the bush somewhere, mm. having a bit of a hike. Yeah. And we always love to stop and have a chat as the inspiration hits us. So today we're talking a little bit about the self-awareness thing because you know, most of us talk about wanting to be self-aware and to and to know who we are and how we behave in certain ways and hope that we'll catch ourselves and we'll break the habit of all those things that we do dysfunctionally that either cause upset in our life, cause drama and distraction, or actually just plain old stops us from getting what we would love. Yeah, and um, and so it, there's just a lot of kind of reactionary stuff that we buy into and, and get involved in. Um, anything from the way we're thinking about what's going on to, to what we say or what how we react and, and that sort of thing and then usually regret having done so afterwards or feel guilty or whatever it is uh, but also ultimately we, we don't get the outcomes we're looking for and we and we wonder you know what's going on what's what's gone wrong here um, where I'm experiencing these outcomes um, in relation to maybe it's friendships or family or just others in the world and and why is it you know and we're, we're kind of baffled by it so we wanted to talk a bit about the unconscious dynamics that uh kicking around when we find ourselves sort of baffled by undesirable outcomes and some of the things that we can become more consciously aware of to kind of do things differently and and actually get different outcomes mm. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, one of the things is, is most of us are aware when we're doing things dysfunctionally. You might be yelling at the kids and in the back of your mind, you're like, oh, it really shouldn't be yelling at the kids right now. Or you're saying, you're about to say something to your spouse or you're saying something to your spouse and you go halfway through the sentence. It's like, I know this is not going to go well, but I'm going to need to finish what I'm saying here for whatever reason. And, and uh, we end up with an outcome that's not so optimal. And then we go away, we might you know, let the whole thing sort of blow over a bit and we end up in self-analysis mode, you know, what did I do wrong there? How could I do better next time? And, and we may even start to manipulate ourselves into what could I have said better or how could I have really got that across to them and, and these sorts of things. And and really, it's it's just that we're in the, the whole wrong orientation. Even if you think you're trying to do better, you're not in the right structure to actually create better outcomes for yourself because where you're coming from is the wrong orientation. And a lot of the time it's same old, same old, because we're just running the same old patterns that we've always run. And we're actually addicted to it, aren't we? We get really addicted to, to running those patterns or those behaviours or saying those things or buying into a story like, oh, I've always got to set boundaries and, and all these sorts of things, you know. Mm. Mm. Yeah, and the, the addiction um, can sort of stem from um, more than one thing, more than one area. So it can be an addiction to... Um, the the fact that it keeps me safe if I if I stay stuck in this albeit um, undesirable way of doing things where I don't like the outcome but it's very familiar you know and it's it's known territory so egoically we like it a lot because it means that we we don't actually have to kind of step into the unknown and therefore you know risk our survival as far as the ego is concerned so we become addicted to staying in the in the unknown sorry staying in the known which is um at a level is comfortable it's safe we rattle around in there we tell ourselves we hate it and we want to do better next time and we wonder why we continually um create the same outcome so that you know that's an addiction to safety mm. there's also well i've got another example yeah. someone who might be addicted to um feeling appreciated and they go about it a really dysfunctional way so they might start an argument with someone for example and they'll get right in the throes of it and it's almost like it, it feels like it's going the opposite end but they're doing it and they're orchestrating it so that they know at some point there's going to be a make-up point where they'll actually make it up to the other person and it'll all come together and then all of a sudden it's, this pendulum swung the other way and now we're in a state of feeling appreciated or you know that you were able to fix something or whatever and then that level of that's like oh yeah I've got my appreciation fix right here and now from that external source and again that's another dysfunctional way and we actually orchestrated that uh, uh, that intricately we don't even recognize that's what's going on yeah so, that's it yeah yeah, and I mean, another aspect to that is is feeling a deeper sense of connection as well. You know, no, we might be feeling like, yeah, we're yeah. not, not whatever your real addiction connected. is. Yeah, yeah, that's it. 
There's another interesting one. I think it's it's cool to kind of come to understand is about the the cells in the body, you mm. know, and the the chemical uh, releases that we get, endorphins and oxytocin and these various dopamine. chemicals. Yeah, yeah yep. dopamine. Yep. Um, when when we when we ha we have a hit, if you like, so. Um, you know, drama and dilemma can, can actually give us a, a release of a certain cocktail of drugs in the body that um, we get and we feel like, ah, oh, that's better, you know. And mm. it's, it's because we have an addiction to that, the release of those chemicals and we know egoically what sorts of things we need to set up and run um, to create the, the very drama that, that allows that to happen. Mm. So initially it starts out as a mental thing, doesn't it? Yeah, it's a bit of a, well, this meets my need on some level. Mm. And then eventually it starts to become like this, this sense of the cells need that com combination of cocktail, as you're saying. So, and like if you're an ad adrenaline junkie and you really enjoy getting out and adventuring and, and uh, doing some rock climbing or, um, you know, paragliding or, what, you know, something that really gets your adrenaline going. It's like, oh yeah, that was awesome. But you haven't had that for a while and you're not getting a chance to get out there and express yourself fully in, in functional ways. And then all of a sudden your spouse is there available for some sort of a fight. Guess what? You'll pick one yeah, and you will, you'll spike the adrenaline and you'll get the cortisol and it feels shit because you don't like what you're saying or what, what's going on between you or whatever, but you're still getting the hit. So the cells don't care. And then, of course, like on the other side of an adrenaline hit, uh, you finish the rock climbing and you, or you, you, you've landed and then at the end of the day you sit around with some mates and you, you have a good mag, don't you? You have a good chat or whatever your thing is. That's the natural and functional way. But with the spouse, it's like, oh, no, let me make that up to you. And then you, you've conquered that and, you, and it's all made up and then we're sitting around being all lovey-dovey again. <laughs> You know, same thing, different cloak. Uh, one's functional, one's very dysfunctional. And uh, and we're just buying into the, the call of the cells. The cells are just like a sugar addict or an alcoholic is going, oh, I need my hit of sugar, I need my hit of alcohol. Whatever it is, it's asking for that combination. So it ends up, instead of just being a mental thing you need to overcome, it's actually a physiological thing. So your whole body's set up physically against you and you're trying to break this habit and you wonder why, oh, I'm back into that cycle yet again. How do we get here again? It must be me or it must be the relationship. Maybe we're not a match or whatever the scenario is that you can overlay this. It might not be a, a relationship. Relationship. It might be your work. It might be uh, different things that you like to try. It might be you've moved house 75 times and you can't find a place that you like to live or something. Yeah. Who knows, right? But, but it's all because we don't know who we really are and how to self-reference and get what we really need from ourselves and be connected to the higher source and then go, actually, the adrenaline thing doesn't really matter because when I'm expressing my heart fully, I feel fulfilled on all levels. And it may take a while to break that habit of going for the full adrenaline hit and then the, the oh, thank God I survived that thing, you know. Yeah. So. yeah, it's patterns. And so there are, we'd love to share, you know, some, some circuit breakers for, you know, for being able to start to get those patterns um, broke, broken so that you can, you can start to explore different ways of doing things. Something just fell out of the tree that broke yeah, my pattern. That broke it. <laughs> Um, and, and, and start to therefore experience different results, you know, um, to, to the norm. And so uh, this is the, the topic of self-awareness. And we often think, oh, yeah, I've heard it. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, yeah self-awareness, we, we bandy it around. But um, the truth of the matter is it's super important, particularly for conscious creators like yourself, um, to, to know when you're in a dysfunctional structure, to know when you're just about to head down a path where, and you know where it's going. And mm. it's that time that this, as soon as you know, as soon as you identify, mm, this is familiar territory, but I'm really charged emotionally, I'm pumped and psyched and ready to go. Um, that's where we then use our will, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Because it's all well and good to have the self-awareness, but then if you don't do anything to change it, that, or you try and beat yourself up so you'll do better next time, it doesn't help you. It really doesn't. It just makes it worse, actually. It empowers that dysfunctional side of you. So a couple of really simple circuit breakers uh, would, first of all, when you notice that you're noticing, give yourself a pat on the back. 
because the fact that you notice that you're noticing is a good thing because otherwise we're just running around and we don't call it unconscious for nothing do we no. we're just running around unconsciously doing things and then trying to pick up the pieces on the other side but the fact that you notice that you notice that you're yelling at the kids or you've started an argument with your spouse or you're you, you know not doing what you need to be doing you're, you're involved in in distraction or whatever great give yourself a tick step one <laughs> that's right and the next thing is um take a breath you know again oh Yawn, take a breath. What's that going to do for me? It's a big deal because when you take a breath where you would otherwise have launched into something, said something, done something, thought something, whatever, that breath is, it represents circuit breaker mm. to your pattern. Yeah, it's so, a big enough gap, isn't it? It's, Just, a big, yeah. it's a big enough gap between what you would, what you got triggered by, and I don't mean triggered by, oh my God, you know, just whatever has set you off on your course, even if it's just your cells starting to call out for something, um, is a, there's a gap between when you get that stimulus and then the response or the reaction that you give it. All you need is a tiny little space just to open up a space of unknown and doing something different. And yeah. the breath gives you that. Yeah, it does. And, and make a, an inquiry. Like, none of this needs to take a long time. It can be on the, on the hop while you're in a conversation, you're about to, you're, you're the person that you're having the conversation with has served the ball, if you like, and you're at the receiving end. You do not need to hit it back. So when you take the breath, um, and, and just know that in any given situation, there's always a higher perspective and a lower perspective, and having the intention in that moment that, I don't know what it is, but I don't want to do the same thing again. And so uh, I feel like fighting right now. I feel like doing what I typically do. I'm going to take a breath. And I'm going to be um, open and with the intention of what's the higher perspective here? You know, I know there is one and I'm just open to it. Don't know what it is. And that, that space, you've broken the pattern. So two things happen in that moment that's really important to be aware of and it's powerful is you haven't put the power into your pattern and reinforce your underlying assumption um, that you've been believing unconsciously to be true that's got you in this situation for a start. So there's no power going there because now you're in the observer mode. And also you've opened yourself up to receiving new insights and new information that are relative to what's going on from a higher perspective. So, you know, you're no longer closed off with the I know how it is here thing going on. Mm. And so it, that's a big deal too. So see how much has happened just because you took a breath and you had an intention to to know the higher perspective in this moment. And here's the thing. If you don't get anything from your higher perspective, you go, oh, look, I got nothing. You know, we're, Linda and Craig are full of shit. You know, I didn't get anything. Well, there's, there's actually even something you can do from there. It's like do nothing. Just do nothing. If you do nothing... Like, even that even means don't withdraw. Like, if you would normally, instead of initiate a fight, go and withdraw and hide away or whatever, don't do that. Just do nothing. Just be with what's going on and just keep the observation going. And at worst case scenario, do anything other than what your egoic agenda is telling you to do. So if it says, oh, you must answer back, or you must tell them how it is, you must say, tell them that they're wrong and you're right, or you must withdraw, do anything. You could do a headstand. You could sing a song. You could go for a drive that you wouldn't normally go for. You know, whatever it is, just do something different. And the higher perspective will come to you. So with some practice, eventually, as Craig said, you'll get it like that. It's like, oh, I've got the higher perspective. This is awesome. Uh, but you don't even need to start there. Just mm. do nothing or do anything different to yeah. what you would normally do. Just do something extraordinary. Break that neurological pattern. Start to break the addiction of the cells at the cellular level, asking for that craved cocktail. And you can go from there. Yeah, brilliant. So, yeah. so make it a, a new sort of um, deal with yourself. But actually, what I'm, what I do from now on is I, I'm looking to break my pattern when, when it's, um, when it's getting started, and as, as early in the piece as I can, and, um, and then practice that. You know, that, that's how I roll now. You know, I don't, I don't go down those paths. I don't indulge that stuff now. Um, so you don't have to be some superhero. You just doing simple things like what we've just described and doing them as often as you as you can you know think to implement them and it's that practice that makes them then second nature and you'll see very early in the piece you, you don't even have to gain any massive mastery here but what you will notice that is very early in the piece your results are going to change there's going to be some magical shifts will take place that don't involve you controlling others 
or, or even manipulating yourself, but yet things have changed and yeah. for the better and I'm <laughs> loving it. And it's like, um, you know, often it's so magical that we, we don't connect that change with those things that you've chosen to implement. But that's, that's, that's the sort of power of, of what we're talking about here. So, mm. so yeah. if you've watched this right through to the end, well done. Well done. That's follow through, like yeah. right there and then. You've, you, and you've received incredible value today. So uh, make sure you put in the, the comments or the chat or whatever platform this ends up on. Just give us a comment. Give us a hoi and say, hey, I followed through. <laughs> Brilliant. And we look forward to seeing you on the next one. See you there.